Hello. I wanted to go over something I did at the event we just had, and and um, I thought I could fine tune it even even more. If for you know, if you're trying to figure out meanings of the cards and 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 what they how to use them in a way that's constructive. You know, you look at it, you look at the cards for an answer and it's hard to see the answer. So you familiarize yourself with the cards. One of the best, one, one way to do that is to reverse the whole process. So if you start, as I starting at the end and working your way back, helps, uh, helps a lot. So if you were to take a situation and create an answers for without any cards at all, just look, okay, this is the situation. Here's what I would do in this situation and write all that down. Then what you do is you take cards and you look for the cards that would would mean what that situation, what that answer was in each one of those steps of your answer. And, and this helps, and so it's reversing things. Instead of looking at the cards for answers, you find the answer and then try to find a card that matches that answer. And then when you see that card, you say, okay, that's what that card means. Or that's a way of, of interpreting that card. And what you'll find is, is a lot of cards, you'll find many cards that maybe would suggest an answer to that segment of your question. Just like in a reading. It's not always the um, one card. There's other cards that would give you the same answer. So it's a good way to familiarize yourself with the deck by reversing the whole process around. And a good way to do that, a good way to visualize that, if you take something from your, your situation right now, it's, it's hard to step outside of it and look at it. But if you were to take a situation that um, you could familiarize yourself with, but you're not, you can't really get into it totally, it's a good idea to to um, find a, a story with that. And what I did is I took a different time period in that uh, what I did at the event is what I took. I took a, a, a thousand years ago as a time period. And I made a situation. And the situation was I was a king. And um, I had my kingdom there. I was in a castle. And I just got word from one of my people that an army just landed on our shores and they're a couple of weeks away from our kingdom and they're and the word is they're going to lay siege to my castle this army is about 10,000 strong and i have about 2 weeks before this is going to happen now my castle has a, a garrison of 400 men I have about a hundred of us outside of the garrison, the king's court, my queen, and 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 others others that work in the castle, livery, blacksmith, things like this. So there's a total of five hundred people living in the castle. Four hundred garrison men at arms to man the walls of the castle, and a hundred people inside the castle and i have enough food to feed us 500 people for three months we also have two well wells within the courtyard of the castle so water is fine and i a garrison of 400 men in a castle manning the walls of a castle is plenty Enough, it's, it's enough to hold off an army of 10,000. 
It might not sound like it would be, but it is. But hold them off for how long? I can, only, I can be there for three months without food, without more food. I also have about a thousand people that are loyal subjects that live right around the castle. They have their farms and they raise sheep and things like this. So another choice, I, one other thing I have to think about is what I'm going to do for them. If I bring them into the walls of the castle, now I have 1,500 people in the castle, which means I only have food for one month. Do I just tell them to leave? Or do I bring them in? What do I have for an asset? There's three other kingdoms nearby. And um, a two days ride on horseback, one of my knights can get to the closest one, the one in the north, and tell them about this, uh, what's going on here, and leave it to him to get in touch with the other two kingdoms. And the total of those three kingdoms could raise an army, I'm guessing, of 5,000 men. and attack this evading army. But this evading army has 10,000 men. So that's the scenario. I have one choice I have to make is I'm gonna, the choice of what I'm gonna do with my um, loyal subjects in the town, in, in the kingdom. I'm gonna tell them to leave. If they stay, they stay at their own risk but they should leave, pack up what they can and leave and come back later when things are more toned down. If they wanted to stay, they could stay probably because more than likely this invading army isn't gonna to wanna to kill them because if they kill them, they gotta bury them. Otherwise it's gonna be very, um, unpleasant around there while they're invading the castle, which could take a long time to do. So they probably would tell them to leave. Another thing is to think about is if this, if this new this king that's invading wanted to uh, take over my castle, which is does what they want to do. Now I would, um, they would want those people to be their loyal subjects. So there's no threat to them. They probably would not kill them. I'll tell my people to stay if, at their own risk, but otherwise they can just pack up and leave. But don't bring them into the walls of the castle. I'm also going to send a knight out, two knights, to the next kingdom and tell them to raise this army, along with the other two kingdoms around them. And I'm also going to tell, this is the 1st of August, let's say, August 1st. I'm also going to tell them to don't attack this invading force till the middle of October. Timing. Position eight on my cross. The reason for that is because the biggest threat that this invading army has is not so much the, the casualties they'll have invading my castle. The biggest threat that they have is going to be dysentery, typhoid. They don't have a sanitary situation there for them. 10,000 men concentrated in one area for that for two months, two and a half months. Dysentery will start to set in. These people will start to get sick deathly sick and a good portion of their army could be very well in not very good shape because of that. So don't attack until October 15th or by the end of October, between October 15th and October 30th. So that's the plan, I'm sending out two nights the same message to the same to another the next kingdom over 
that this is the plan. So now what we could do is we could throw over cards to match this whole situation that I just mentioned. I just said, now we, we already have the solution. What we're gonna do, now I'm gonna put this into a Celtic cross and say, okay, how can I find, what cards would fit as answers that would make sense to what I just said is gonna be what we're gonna do. I'm just looking for cards that would fit what I've already decided. So what we're doing is we're re reversing the whole process to, and the reason for it is to familiarize yourself with the cards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to do a cross on this, um, on this scenario. And I'm going to show you the cards that I, felt would, would make sense with this. Okay, now I have some, I'm using the Rider Waite deck here. And um, I've already selected the cards I'm gonna use to save time. Like I said, we're not gonna throw cards randomly here. I'm selecting cards that I think would be appropriate to the sections of the questions that we already know the answers to because we already figured out what we're gonna do. Incidentally, these, uh, my, my wrist here is from my cat. My cat likes to attack my hand. So I'm okay. <laughs> I let him do that. He thinks I'm a chew toy, so. But I'll survive. So anyway, if you write out a Celtic cross here, you write it out and just, um, it helps uh, see those steps. Put my Celtic cross. And numbers one and two positions here, one and two are the first two cards right here. And um, what I decided to put there and like I said, I'm assigning these cards. I know what the situation is. I'm the king. I have um, an, uh, an army coming here to attack the castle. I just got that information. That's the, that's the whole situation here. And I threw over the king of cups. Obviously, a king would be appropriate there. Very convenient with this Rider Waite deck. With any deck, actually. And I'm throwing over a card that I think throws a lot of curveballs to people, the nine of swords. The way I see the nines are attainment. So we have the king and the nine of swords as numbers one and two position of the cross. So the king has, has attained something here. People say, well, how do you see nines as attainment? When you see this nine of swords, it doesn't look like attainment. It looks pretty sad. Not all attainments are happy. But it was very, very important information that I received about this attack on my castle. That was very important in attainment. So it's not all attainments are happy ones, but they were important. So I've received this bad news, but it's important news. And what I have to do now, I'm throwing over cards. I'm using cards that a lot of people seem, there's a little bit of confusion with, with people with me on defining the cards. I got the three of swords. What I'm, going, what I'm currently going through right now is the three position, number three on the cross. I'll do this. Number three position. Numbers one and two, three of, sword, three of swords right here. I have, I have threes as creativity. Right now, what I'm going through is I'm, in, I'm finding out answers, what I need to do. I'm, my immediate goals, I'm looking for what needs to be done. I'm making my plans right now. Again, I'm not a happy situation. What I want to achieve, ultimately, my initial goals is the stability of the fort or the, the castle. 
I want things structured. I want things fortified with the four of pentacles. First things first. I have over here in the five position, an asset that I have going for me. A card would we'll work there as a seven of swords. There's other kingdoms around. There's ways we can beat this invading force if, they, if we play things right. But things have to be in line. Opportunity. Position six, the star card. I see the center card here is me. The surrounding cards is the other kingdoms. Words got to get out. So things can be prepared. These other kingdoms will help because they know that they're next if they don't help. What we need to do is we all need to unite here and take on this force. How am I seeing my own situation here? My own situation, I'm seeing here, I got the two of swords. Hard choices have to be made. I could also look at this as the five of coins. I'm seeing it as a disruption, five of coins. Hard choices with the two of swords. That's how I'm seeing this situation. I gotta tell the people to leave. I can't take them in. I can't tell my subjects to come into the castle. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough food to, to last three months if they come into the castle. So it's a disruption for the whole kingdom. Timing, position eight. I'm gonna use the eight of swords here. I'm using the seven. Eight, nine, ten of swords and the three of swords on purpose to show how they could have meaning with a situation like this. The timing, eight of swords. Eight, eights are advancement to me. Here we have a lack of advancement. She's bound, blindfolded. And I'm telling these other kingdoms to wait, hold up. It's important that they hold up for two and a half months before they attack this invading force because this invading force has got to become weak and it's going to take time for that to happen. In the meantime, it's up to me to hold off this invading army that's attacking my castle for two and a half months, giving them time, a hold up and attack in two and a half months. They need to wait, time to wait, then advance. The whole purpose of this, I want to put the emperor. You could also put the wheel, turn things around on this invading force. The whole purpose of this is to turn things around on this force. I could also look at that as, as, as the emperor. The purpose of this is I'm the king of this kingdom. I need to be the one who's responsible on what we're going to do here and come up with a solution that will keep everybody, keep the kingdom in place. And lastly, we'll have the outcome, the Ten of Swords. The army's 10,000 strong. I see the Ten of Swords as failure for them, if we can follow through with this whole situation. And if this my allies wait two and a half months, before they attack, things should work out fine. And you can throw other cards in here to find the same the same thing. We have I have two cards in the nine position, the emperor, the wheel card. Both of them show a purpose. We want to turn things around in this invading force, and the whole purpose is I'm the one who's responsible for this kingdom. I'm the emperor. 
the king. Opportunity to strengthen my situation is coming. I could use strength card there. I could also put the strength card here in the, in the seven position and say, I'm seeing this as I can't strengthen my position. I could put a knight here in opportunities in the sixth position, send my knights out to spread the word, get an army together from the other kingdoms. So different cards can, can show the same answer. An asset, I can't strengthen my situation. What I'm trying to do is strengthen my situation. So you can see that other cards can mean give the same message once you know what you're looking for. I can put judgment here in the sixth position. Say these, I know these, I can count on these other kingdoms to, to come to my aid because if they look at things and justify it, they can see that they're next. If they don't come all together here, if we don't all unite, this invading force is going to be taking them on too. So it's key that we unite here. Now, obviously, a situation like this can never happen because it's not a thousand years ago. And I don't own a castle and I'm not a king. <laughs> but you can see how you could create a, a question and you could take one of, of this particular time if you want. It just makes it easier if you take one that you can step outside of that you're not really involved with in any way. I'm going to write these down here. King. Cups. I don't even need the suit. Nine swords. Three swords. Four coins. Seven swords. Star. Two swords. Oh, we can go with the five coins. Five coins. Eight swords. Emperor. And ten swords. Throws our cross. Right there. The situation. I'm seeing it as I have to make some hard choices and I see some hard times coming our way with the five of coins, two of swords. What am I doing right now about it? Finding answers, finding solutions. What do I got to do? What plans do I have to put into place on this unpleasant situation with the three of swords? Ultimately, what I'm looking to do right now is make sure we're secure with the four of coins. What do I got going for me? It's an asset, seven of swords. We have things that we can put into place here. We can surprise this army. We can surprise this force if I get these other kingdoms together. And I can do that with the star card on the sixth position by getting the word out there to them. We'll all unite. We'll come together. Eight of swords, position eight. Timing. Wait. Two and a half months. We could even say it's wait 
eight, we could say, it's the eight of swords in the eighth position. Well, if we look at the eight swords, we could say, wait eight weeks, two months, then start to move forward on our kingdom. Make it eight weeks, then start to move on our kingdom. The purpose here, the purpose here of this whole plan is because I need to protect the kingdom. I'm the emperor. And I got to put this into place. Put a plan into place. Something that'll work. That's why I'm looking at my options with the three of swords that's why i'm making sure we secure this kingdom here this court this castle and if we put if everything goes right with the star card we get these we get these other kingdoms to come to my aid the ten of swords looking at the picture of the ten of swords i could say we'll beat this invading force This might look like a mess, but it is a mess. In your, in your head, you're putting it all together. Let me just put a couple of different cards. But now you can see, you could, you could put whatever cards you want to put down to make this situation happen. What cards would tell the story of this idea that we just created? And find them in your deck and put them down. All of a sudden, you'll see meaning in those cards. You'll see the meaning right there. And, now, and you'll also see that more than one card can have be placed there. More than one card can be placed there. How am I seeing my own situation? I got the five coins here. A real disruption. I'm also seeing it as the two of swords. I got to make some hard choices here. What am I going to tell my subjects? I tell them I got to leave town. There's going to be a real problem for the next couple, two or three months here. Some sacrifices, some choices got to be made. I got to put the sixth the star card here as far as getting the word out to these other kingdoms as my opportunity. I got to also put judgment there. These other kingdoms are going to look and say, you know what, we better help because we're going to be next if we don't. So they'll be there. Seven of Swords here. I'm, I'm coming up with ideas. I'm going to, i got a plan in place. And I could put this into place with the Seven of Swords. It's a good idea. I could also put as my, my asset is I can strengthen my position. You can go through the deck and you can find cards in here that would fit. And all of a sudden your cards got meaning by doing that. Just another good way to um, show meaning in the cards by getting an example and then showing how the card could mean that example. Hope you like this. Keep throwing cards. We'll talk soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.